Hey guys, welcome to another um, continuance part three of this great plate design that I'm trying to put. Hopefully you can see that it's not backwards. Actually, it looks like it's backwards, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So last last time I prepared the plate to the shape I wanted as much as I could. I even added a bit more to the thickness of it in the middle. Let me just adjust this down here. Over here. So I put a bit more thickness so that when I carve into it, I can dig out a bit more according to my, um, you know, whatever it is I'm trying to come up with at the end of this process. So hopefully um, you'll bear with me and, you know, enjoy this, um, this little escapade into another year of not having done this back into the fray, fray as they say. So I'm going to start off straight away with, uh, it's like the thickness here is perfect for me. Like it's get my tools into here it's like the right thickness and everything uh should have washed my tools but i didn't because i think i got i was i've, I've been busy i've been really busy uh, you guys probably know how busy i am by the videos and posts i make constantly it's probably like <laughs> all the time because i only, you know like this morning i only had two hours sleep and i had to do a photo shoot for a poster because one of our awesome cosplayers came down Early in the morning, with their costumes all designed, ready to go, and I, of course, uh, was still asleep. And then, so I quickly got up, and then had another one. Um, another one, one of the guys came up and hold the light while we did the, uh, you know, while I took some photos with the mobile. And then now tonight, I'm going to be um, sitting in bed, lying in bed, I should say, um, and as I normally do, apart from the two hours I do these things at, and. Um, work on the other side of back here that's it so other side of um the poster because i've already got our guest uh, image already but now i'm going to i'm going to clean it up the background that is and then impose that onto another um another image behind which kind of you know that brings both of them together so yeah it's like it's so cool i'm just so excited um both our cosplayers, you know, artisans themselves and creative people themselves, they put a lot of work into, whoops, into this this whole endeavor of, you know, not only just being in the poster, but being at the event, especially with, excuse me, cheers, having a support um, there, um, all the way from Japan. Hmm. Hopefully you guys were able to um, catch the, you know, excuse me. Hopefully you guys were able to catch the, <laughs> I'm just looking at this, all of a sudden I'm just seeing this bear in my, polar bear in my head, um, hat on. It's nice and warm actually, with the ears covered and all that. Now, yeah, so hopefully you guys were able to catch the live stream with um, Bill Gerrard's, uh, Gerard's um, from, from Armageddon Expo, which and where they have their the hundred hundred event, I mean that's a milestone. That's huge, right? Hundred event next Saturday, the tenth and eleventh, and uh, of course they have the Friday night event, and um, and if you're able to get along to it, um, you know it's. it's, it's as much as it's, you know, it's a pop culture event, it's a social event, you know, all these things are mainly social events, like what we do is also is a social event, uh, people come and have fun with their friends, and so, you know, that allows them to hang out, you know, uh, be exposed to other people similar to them, who have similar interests, I should say, not similar to them, but have similar interests, and that allows, um, you know, growth in those communities, and which is really what you know, at the end of it, if you saw the little trailer um, I've cut up and put up there, the two and a half minutes or so of Bill just talking, you know, or two minutes or so, Bill just talking, and I just asked him the question, you know, what, give me your final words on this whole thing, what do you think? And he said, you know, you should support your local events um, because they're great things and because, you know, uh, they, yeah, the community, you're supporting your community and stuff. And I think, you know, he gets it because he's been there for so long, 27 years of um, running these things. And that's just the, you know, 
it's just, um, you know, what I consider an elder statesman. I think, um, or stateswoman, a statesperson, what do you want to, call, you know, I mean, statesperson or statesman, what do you, what do you want to call it? Um, but it's someone who's, you know, has um, put a lot of effort into the um, arts community and pop culture community events, you know, everything, like gaming and all that that's, that's gone on in the past, you know, years that they've done it in New Zealand. And I think, um, you know, I'm glad to have, like, be able to do these, uh, as I explained to Bill, these, um, these um, long uh, form interviews, discussions, because it allows people to get a bit more uh, in depth uh, look into the, um, into the person's life, or not person's life, but so much more um, knowledgeable about the person that's being talked about. And that's why I think we win. I mean, not we win, but why what podcasting? Why podcasting has become such a you know important aspect of social life, uh, you know the fact that you know because of COVID, people were confined to confined to their homes and stuff, and so they couldn't um, you know get out and mingle, and so people started you know having excuse me conversations and stuff. Oh, that's the one perfect conversations and stuff with people online and having long you know zoom calls and whatever and make having meetings um being creative i mean most of my my time spent online um you know talking to artists working with them i mean even today i a sunday right but it doesn't like when you're a creative person weekends don't mean a thing especially if you're working for yourself like i am like i mean in the sense of what we do like um you know you you have like this two hour burst of energy and that's it. After that, I kind of get, I feel empty and down and I have to watch myself because I've exerted my energy out and I need to be very careful that I don't, um, you know, don't overdo, overdo it. So I, I make sure that that two hours, I'm really onto it for those two hours and I, I give my best, um, you know, attention in those two hours because um you know because the people are, uh, people are, um you know have on they themselves are very professional and i and i want to well, show people that these are professional people who really care about what they do but also that their time is of value as well and i think this is something you know we take for granted i mean those of us in the, in, in this thing kind of industry whatever you want to call it uh or events and all that and anything and look uh, you know i'm not trying to say that what, what, what i do or what we do is something great or far above everybody else it's more about like um when you're in this mindset it doesn't turn off right you're, you're constantly thinking about it you're constantly coming up with how to do something different how to do ideas and stuff and, and that's a creative mind and then when you add the organization side of that man it becomes so much more drastic right <laughs> overwhelming drastic you know uh, and kind of um, it becomes something um, more than you would thought or so here's what I'm doing I, I how are you um, yeah, so this is, this is, uh, I'm going to probably mirror on this, so just think of it as an opposite to what you're seeing. And this is going to be, um, this is called Parasea. There's a reason for it, and I can't really give that away right now, because it's part of a comic book that we're putting out, and I'm not really into spoiling my own comic book that way, but it's part of the um, incredible, um, incredible, incredible comic book, part of the Plunge Universe that we're releasing later on this year after plunge is over but we've got we're going to be you know we've got carry carry coming up next year i'm quite excited we've already got people interested in helping out and volunteering i'm grateful for that thank you you know um those of you who have put your hands up because we want you to own this over there in the far north uh, there's nothing more boring and um than putting something on 
and the actual local people don't become you know don't own it don't take it on board as one of their own you know things that they have in their community that they can you know come to and appreciate you know not appreciate but kind of well, appreciate as well but kind of um see themselves as a part of that and i think that's i i want that to be a important thing here for for people to see right to see that hey this is uh, very important for our for our environment i mean for our community you know and um you know things that are going on so as i mentioned this is just a, this little thing is just a starting point for me right this is this is where i start it does not end here so now that i've got my main design in the middle now i figure out what it is that i need to do and do i um you know and i'm just gonna let it go i'm just gonna go freehold here and i'm just gonna try to work out you know um what is this um you know this little you know this little you know i hope you can see that no you can't i started this is how i start and i told so and i just let it do its thing so i don't try to um, force whatever this um will become the only force that it's here is that, that it's you know that um what am i trying to say that i've already the, the circle parasaia part of it is all that you know that matters that me, that needs to be the main you know the main uh, um focus point but the rest you know the rest is just um free fall free free for all free all yeah something like that. free free for free for all yeah free for all that's the one it's like a royal rumble if you're, if you're you know if you're a wrestling fan you understand what that is it's like every you know person comes in every couple of minutes to sort something out you know or you know a battle starts and adds to the fray and next thing you know uh another person comes in when the time's over and next thing and so this is basically what this is this is like every few minutes i'll add a bit more to it you know i'll see where it's going and then i'll say okay this is where it's going and i'll try to be a bit more you know take it away and add my little um tribal thing um designs i call it it's not really tribal it is what it is it's modernized well i guess it's modern tribal okay i guess you could call it that so yeah so i you know um hopefully with all these events with you know uh we, we're putting on like especially this one coming up and then straight after that next year we've got carry carry and 4th of February. I hope that you guys will, yeah, will come and um, be a part of that. And there's nothing more awesome than to be at a community event that you've helped just, you know, that local people have helped put together, volunteered, businesses have become part of it, and so on. And, you know, all and sponsored or taken part in it because it just, there's just such a cool feel to it. I mean, you know it's there's nothing um more amazing than that i think is that when uh, when the community comes together let's see one of the things about being free uh you know doing this free-handed and just not planning it out you know early on and stuff let's see if i can bring this a little closer so that, yeah it's not doing its thing that i wanted because I've, I've, I've jerry-rigged a, um, a specific um, little, you know, setup. And so you're not going to be able to see a lot of this. And hopefully, I was hoping it would because I've got the light set up and everything. But, of course, there's this ridge over here and it's kind of hiding it. And sorry for that. But, yeah. So, if you live in the far north and if you want to get involved as a volunteer or if you're a business owner, and you want to, you know, donate something in reference to what we're doing, um, plunge, uh, I think it's plungecarycarry at gmail.com. That's the email address for that. And um, feel free to contact us on that. Um, I've just set it up this year. 
so that we can keep it separate from the other one. So we you get your you know we give you a, a full attention when that comes in. We don't miss it. You know it doesn't get lost amongst all the other ones. You know as emails get tend to do. Um, I've had a ter terrible experience recently where an email I sent out that was worth a fair amount to us um, didn't even end up where it was supposed to and um, ended up costing a lot because it never got there um, or it accidentally was deleted and so on so so I thought well the best way to deal with something that could happen like that is to have a specific email address for that event and that way people know exactly you know they can when they send it to that address it will get to that address there'll be no losses <laughs> you know no no remorse as the metallica song goes i think it's metallica no remorse or was it some other band i don't know can't remember been too long all right so i've done about right i've done about a fifth of it yeah i think it's about a fifth just over a fifth of it so what happens after I finish this all, I end up basically carving it, removing the bits and pieces within the lines I don't want. So it becomes like a puzzle. And it's, this is kind of like, my artwork is inspired by carvings and from a lot of different, uh, um, you know, cultural, like really, really, really old, old like designs uh in, in the world um uh, from so many different races that you, you know you can't you specifically can't say this is this this is where this is wrong because i wanted to when i was doing this it was just about design and i'm a designer right that's that's what i, I see myself as as a designer um so i i just feel like that this is just a natural aspect of what i wanted to do you know, uh, I mean, of this art form. And, and working with ceramics brings it together in a very natural, uh, earthy way, I guess, because, of, you know, clay and stuff, but it's a hands-on thing compared to digital work that I do design-wise. And so it allows me to really have fun you know, play with mud again, as we, as we, you know, as, we, as we used to do as kids, right? Growing up, you just play in the mud and kick it around, kick out the raindrops. I mean, rain. Um, sorry, not me. Rain pu puddles. Yeah, mud puddles, water puddles, rain puddles. And so, you know, it's just another aspect of that. And the other thing is, like, because I work with clay on this sort of, you know, these art forms. Um, um, designs and um, so on it I can fix it you know just like when I'm doing it on computer I can fix it and it's not a and that's what I love about it it's not a a be all and all uh, part of you know thing that, would, that I'm doing it's basically you know I can just rub it rub more mud into it as they get a little more clay into it, more mud into it. And um, and that way I can just fix my error and carry on. And no, no, no problems, right? Um, and this is the beauty of working with clay. Of course, the other side is that when it gets ends up in the in the old um, in the kelm, you don't know how it's gonna turn out unless you're ultra professional, ultra careful, you know exactly how it's going to go, like porcelain and stuff like this, right? It gets, um, it gets um, poured, as they call it, I think it's ceramic, poured ceramic, um, you know, like porcelain and stuff like that. So it's kind of, it's pretty cool. I, I enjoy watch, working with clay, it's, you know, it's, it's just because it's such a natural part, um, medium, you know? Um, and plus there's so much of it and it's so cheap and you can, you know, for 30 bucks, you can get a whole big block and, you know, I was able to make three items, what was it four items out of one single block? And that, and that block was actually a, uh, a gift you know, from a mate of mine who I went to, um, art school with 
Kevin Morrissey, and he got me back into it. And that only came about because I just put a post up on here saying, hey, I'm looking at getting back into ceramics. I was inspired by going to, you know, um, quarry arts and got reminded of why I used to do it, why I enjoyed doing it. And so he said, hey, i got a bag, and he just came over and dropped it off. And even when he dropped it off, and um, I was asleep, <laughs> you know, so I never even got to see him. And so, yeah. But that's a long, long friendship there, you know, decades of friendship. You know, and it's just so cool um, building, you know, lifetime uh, friendships sort of. Okay, almost halfway through. I think, yeah, I think once I do that, then I'll go into middle. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not playing, the only plan is a circle in the middle here, the Parasad design, um, which is this one here. All right, so that's the only fixed um, design. The rest is, as you can see, the maze design. That's just what goes wherever it goes. And I'll start digging at it later on to make a three dimensional lift to it. Um, so it ends up something, some, like this is what really cracks me up because it's like, it's basically like this sort of, um, you know, this, that doesn't show that much, but like, like Minecraft, you know, it's, it's like my designs are like Minecraft and you know, the whole pixel thing. And yet I was doing this sort of stuff, but I mean, this stuff's been around for years, but I mean, you know, even before I put it in it, but I kind of bring, um, even before even thinking about that, this is way back in the 90s when I started doing this. I um, I kind of think that there's nothing really new under the sun. You just bring your own little um, twist to it. And a lot of times people get dismayed by seeing things already out there and so they, they give up. I think you, by doing that, you don't grow. But you also, you know, it feels like you, you don't, you're not able to also give out of yourself, which is a kind of a really cool, giving out of yourself is such a cool thing. Uh, and I learned this when I was in, in like, in, in, in religious groups, right? Is that when you give out of yourself, there is this giving that you get back in your emotional and mental state, which helps you to adjust to better to people better to yourself get a better understanding like even now like i'm what we're doing with the events that we do it gives me so much pleasure even though it's such a hard work it gives me so much uh well-being i guess i don't know what the technical terms that these silly things are but uh a a feeling of worth and because there's a feeling of worth and value to what i'm doing I'm able to share that with others and feel their, them getting enriched by what I'm doing as well as I'm getting enriched by what they're doing. You know, like what they're bringing to the table as such, what their, what their interests are right, what their passions are right, you know. Like I mentioned earlier, I mean, 9 o'clock, 9.30 this morning, I get a, you know, a, I was supposed to be already awake, but I only had two hours sleep. I went to bed at about six something. And um, I get a, I'd arranged for um, Lynette, who's a cosplayer, who's going to be an imposter soon. That she's, you know, she's saying, I'm heading down now. Where are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm actually asleep. <laughs> I'm actually asleep because I went to bed late. Uh, but hey, come on down. I'm. Give me 10 minutes, I'll have a quick shower, and we'll be ready to go. And she came down, and, you know, I'm in the shower. You know, I'll pop out, there she is waiting for me. And, um, you know, on the doorstep, and she's dressed up in her costume that she's built herself. You know? That she's designed according to the designs that, um, you know, the two of us gave, you know, based off another design that, we, that I did. That the two of us worked on together to make it work as a cosplay uh, and and to realize that how you know how to make it work uh, as a wearable art that it stands out 
and it looks updated uh, from its initial stage that I had designed it as a long time ago with several artists, well, about two, three artists, let's say. And then, you know, finally, then this year, I decided that, you know, I think maybe it's worth, you know, updating it all. And so, yeah, updated costume. Um, then I sent the look, the, the mock-up look to to the artist who's working on the comic book. I said, this, this do this poster for me. Um, do me an image of this. And he did, and it looked really cool. And I said, yes, this is it. You know. So we had a 9, 9.30 Sunday morning, right? It was 9.30 Sunday morning photo shoot. For a poster, I got to work on the next 40, 20, 20 odd hours lying on my back because that's how I work. Um, otherwise, I, um, I get very tired, very exhausted, physically unhealthy and um, in pain. So yeah, so putting in my two hours and that's that, and then lying in bed and then just lying there, medicated, <laughs> actual you know proper medication from the pharmacist as such, and um, and just letting mouse you know clicking 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 with the mouse and making. Um, making the poster and the flyers for our event. And then I thought, well, before I do that, I better get and do this while it's daylight and while I can, you know, while I can put this video on so you guys can watch. Um, and so I don't get bored just, you know, because it, it is kind of like this sort of stage is kind of tedious because I'm just marking out what, what, I, you know, what I'm supposed to be doing here and how it's supposed to look. And it's not, you know, the, the so-called genius at his work. It's just me twiddling my fingers over this design that I want to do, hoping that it comes out good enough that people will actually donate towards it so that it will, um, you know, the funds raised will help, you know, the... Um, our awesome center, Quarry Arts Center. As I mentioned, you know, um, they do a great job up there. They support a lot of, um, I guess, emerging artists and as, you know, and talent, you know, people who are, who are looking to get into it and also people who are already there, you know. And, um, and it's needed. Because sometimes when you're just starting out, you need that support. And I just want to be part of that help towards them because I know I've been helped a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about the quietness there. I was just trying to figure that out, making sure I don't stuff up something here. I was watching um, one of my favorite all time for the last 10 years, my favorite comedy show, modern comedy show, right, TV show, is a 20 minute, six episode Canadian series, live action, you know, with real people, called Letterkenny. Letterkenny is about like, a farming town, uh, you know, in Canada, and it's about farmers, it's about, you know, just people in a small town, and it kind of reminds me, like, of Moro, but it doesn't, because I grew up in Moro, right, so it kind of reminds me of Moro, it doesn't, but then it reminds me of Nandobi, where I grew up, in San Sai Island, and then it doesn't, because kind of like, like, if you really think about the agri agriculture and farming 
uh, just, you know, people around the world, they're all pretty much the same. It's much like the suburbanites, right? They, they're pretty much the same. And um, they have their own sort of, um, you know, um, levels of contentness in life. Um, they have, they, um, it's the, you know, how they deal with people, um, how they talk to people, what they understand about things, and how they see the world. You know, it's a very, very down to um, earth, um, you know, lifestyle, right? I mean, you know, where they, you know, where they're looking after um, animals, looking after their um, land. It's such a, I just, I can't stop laughing when I watch it because the talent in the writing is so good. So if you haven't seen Letter Kenny, you should look it up. You 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 know it is a mature series, and there's no it's no holds barred. They talk about all sorts of things, and you know, and very much relevant. It's it's really it's really relevant to the time that they write it in, and so it's it's really fun in that because you know there's so much jokes that are going on. You think oh yeah, yeah that's funny. Yeah, I get that. I get why that's that there. And then, you know, out of the blue, though, you just get to see something very, very cool uh, in the way they, you know, they all come together. It's such a beauty of, you know, that, that whole aspect of farming communities and stuff. And, um, you know, small, small, small knit communities. And that's what I, that's what I like about from Ray Wire. I think this is my favorite place in the world is because it's that small knit community that we have, even though we're a city, right? There is an aspect to us which we are like a village. Uh, and so because we're part of an um, artistic village, we're so, um, you know, where a lot of creativity happens uh, constantly. Um, and there's so much support for that. It's such a joy to be a part of this, um, this you know, this village because it um you know it's just it's growing all the time and i hope that you know what we're doing is helping it grow as well all the other little villages inside the village you know like all the subcultures um uh, subgroups in their own little worlds you know that they have created you know gaming um groups uh cosplay you know uh, so much tabletop, all that, you know, board games, uh, reading groups, you just, you know, it's, it's such a, such a joy, I think, um, to be a part of this little village that we have, in the sense that we're not so big that we don't, um, we don't appreciate each other, because I've lived in cities, and sometimes when you live in the big city, you don't see people for months and months and months, it's almost like being under COVID <laughs> lockdown, whereas like here, you'll see somebody just by walking down the road and connect with them straight away, you know. And I think that's that is truly the beauty of Whangarei. It's a big city that's a small village. Almost finished. Yeah, so. Right, a little tiny bit at the top there, and then I'm going to spend a bit of time just kind of um, cleaning up and stuff, and brushing it off. This is why this is here, and this is why this is here, so I can just brush off all the bits and pieces, and you know, pour it into there, and then I'll wet it if, when I need it to fill holes and what my mistakes, fix my mistakes, because I don't like wasting. I don't like wasting clay even, and so you know. <laughs> As cheap as it is, I still don't like wasting even that. I usually, you know, dust it all up and I just put it back in the bag with the rest of it. And because of that, it just, you know, soaks back into the rest of the bag of, you know, the wet clay that's already in there. Okay, let's make sure this tie, this finishing, it finishes in the right way. So that comes out here.
Ich mal. Okay. Close it up. Not to close it. Box in the L shape. Going across the glass. Usually, I mean, the last time I worked on was on a circular uh, rugby ball shaped one. Oval, I guess, in the circular um, shape. So it's different to working on a, you know, a flat surface that just curves up like this. Um, I'm hoping that whatever I do here brings it all together. There we go. That's what that's on. Because I know I want to see that. And then when I close this the circle itself of this maze, that um it doesn't feel out of place because you know I'm bringing it all around from my, from starting to my end here. And um, some fixings will happen over time, but it feels like a weave, as you can see. It's like feels like I'm weaving these patterns in here, and I quite like that. I think it's quite cool. But that is my art style um, in, a, in a nutshell. It's just, excuse me, it's me just um, playing around with designs on clay plates and clay rugby balls and so on. So, so that's the MT, that's the one, that's the physical, and all that's physical, so that's MT. Here, but it's a wide line. I don't. Right. Okay, there. That's a bit weird. Right. I'm almost done with my complete little design work of on this plate. I try to get this done so I don't have to worry about, I mean, get my outline done so I don't have to worry about anything else I need to do later. I just dig and dig and dig out the pattern. Okay, that's wrong. And this is a difference. <laughs> There's a cool thing about working with um, clay. It's just, just rub it out, <laughs> fill it in. And you're good to go. Okay, so there's that. And there is something just a bit there that's comes to this line. Where it was joining up with the rest. Right, there we go. So that has to come together. to pay more attention to this little bit here than I've had to put in the rest of it because it's the finishing bit you know so 
is the more important part of this because it's got to look natural when I'm closing it up. Otherwise, if I don't, if it doesn't look natural, you will notice. You know, you'll notice that this it just it kind of stands out like a sore thumb. You know, and I don't want that. You know, I don't want people to think ah, oh, he wasn't paying attention, did he? He watched that. Which I have to tend to do sometimes, um, and I'm um, rushing things like this before it's the proper time for it, and I, you know, I don't up to that. And that's why I've slowly brought in more people to help me with plunge and um, help, help me with the enterprise and seeing what we're doing. And it takes time to bring in people who have sort of the same uh, thinking in the sense of how, you know, the process of what, we, what we're building uh, or working towards, as well as, you know, um, having the skill set as well, because not everybody who wants to do something has the right skill to do that you know and that only comes through um doing things i think it's uh, and experiencing it and um taking time to learn them and not everybody's gonna have the same skills and that's that allows for someone like me to say you're better here or you're better there and that would work better there and um you know have you thought about this one and um you know have you thought about this area and that area or um so on because i think you know you'd be better at that and it's just cool seeing people like especially when i'm working with um uh, creatives and artists seeing how they fit into things that they didn't think they would you know necessarily thought they would fit into or they were good at where they think they're good at something, but you realize that they're actually bit, something better at something else. And um, because you're able to see that, you're able to help them. And, they're, and also the other way as well, they're able to help you um, do a better job. And also them, them, they themselves are able to do a better job in the area that they actually are good at rather than floundering in an area that they're not good at and I'm, I've been the same I've been you know I've tried so many things over the years and found that not not every area any thing I've tried that I've been good at or come near to it being good at okay so that is the line that is that line so it just needs that needs to be in there that needs to go there. And so this one is not too far. See some negative and a positive on the slide here. Mm -hmm. So this little area is going to get me a lot of problems because as I'm trying to close it, I'm just going to have to rub it all out <laughs> right? and start again. And that's something that's really cool about this. You can just, unlike if you're carving a you know a piece of wood. Or a bone you can't do this you know you can't just rub it out and start all over again you kind of have to like work a new design into it or just throw it out because that's that now if i do that there now i might have to put that there that comes in that goes out and see this is this is where it goes wrong Right, so that touches there. Uh, I see. That's what I wanted to do. 
and it's got it's done what it needed to do. Perfect. Let's see. Cornerstone. It needed a cornerstone. Like all of us we need a cornerstone. That little bit that holds us all together. Okay. That centers us. Okay, so that one. Yeah, so that's that goes there, that goes there, that goes there, that comes down. Yep. That goes like. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah, these sort of things, this, these times can get quite boring. That's why I like talking to, I like having other people on board when I do the podcast because me just getting talking about myself is boring. But I, I just wanted to do this because I wanted to kind of in a way show you the process of me doing this or I doing this or whatever. And, um, and so in seeing it, you'll be able to be more, more invested in it because, you know, I would love for you guys to actually support the plate by, you know, I mean, sorry, support um, Quarry Arts by, you know, supporting the plate. Because that's negative, that's negative. And this is positive. So that's negative. That's positive. That's positive. Now, so that means there's my A. So my A comes down. Closing off the surgical cuts. Do. It's annoying because I can't seem to um, close up this corner without it looking a bit wonky.
almost finished and did not turn off this video. And then I'll leave this for another day. Hopefully tomorrow. I've got another meeting tomorrow. It's going to be a long day tomorrow, I guess. It's a long afternoon. I get to sleep in. But then I'm busy. I've got my CFO and my assistant admin coming tomorrow to discuss paperwork, financials, and paperworks. Which I kind of do not like doing a lot of. And so, you know, having someone who's actually good at, good at it helps. And of course, I can fix it if anything, you know, if I see some errors while I'm working at this, which, you know, it's bound to happen, bound to see errors. When we actually begin the carbon aspect of this, That's it for today. We'll see you next time, guys, for number four when I start carving it all out. Bye.